A few months ago, OpenAI released structured outputs in their API. I finally got a chance to play around with it. I definitely see some use cases. So in this video, I'll quickly show you what this is. I'll walk you through an example, how to make the API call, how I'm using it, and I'll hopefully teach you when structured outputs are appropriate and when they are not. Okay, let's get into it. So what is a structured output? Well, a structured output is meant to give you consistent results. And you do that through what is called a JSON schema. This is a schema. And what's going on in this example is that they are requesting steps. And each step has an explanation and an output. So when the output comes out, you get this object of steps with an explanation and an output. Now you can definitely just do this through the system prompt and the user prompt. So for the system instructions, I could write, give me a series of steps that solve. And in their example, they give this equation. So I'm going to copy this, paste it in, and we'll write show an explanation and an output. So if I send that through, we are going to get a response. Look, the assistant says, sure, let's go through the steps to solve the equation. We got some markdown, bolding this text, step one, step two, step three, we got some output. Do you see how crazy this entire output is? If I wanted to display this to my users, how would I know where step two is? How would I know where step three is? And even if I ran this exact thing again, let's open up a new tab for the system instructions. I'm going to say the same thing. And for the user instructions, Let's write the same thing. Let's go run. This says isolate the variable term for step one. And in this one, it says start with the given equation. So our outputs are completely different. That is using one of the best models right now. Can you imagine if I used an even worse model like GPT-4 Omni Mini or GPT-3.5 Turbo? We would get an infinite number of variations to the output. So in our app, unless we have a giant text block that displays this answer, we can't get any consistency. So this is where structured outputs come into play. You structure your output using a JSON schema. And what happens is the GPT model fills in your specific parameters. So again, in this example, we have a series of steps and each step includes an explanation and an output. The explanation is a string and the output is also a string. And what we get is the GPT model filling in the explanation step with the output and then doing it again for step two, output, step three, output. And in the request, they also want a final answer. And that is shown down here. So if I ran this request 100 times, it would output steps, explanations, outputs and a final answer 100 times. And then in my app, I could parse this JSON, grab just the explanation, display it to my user, grab just the output, display it to my user, instead of having to display all of this or extracting some things that I don't know if they're gonna 100% exist in every API call. According to this chart, using structured outputs, they were able to get a perfect score in terms of consistency. So no longer do you need very long prompts to constantly tinker with those prompts to get an output that's like over 80% consistent. With structured outputs, you can get it 100% of the time. Okay, with my high level overview out of the way, let's build our own JSON schema to hopefully better teach and show you what's actually going on. My favorite platform to build in is Bubble. So in the API connector in Bubble, I'm going to add another API and let's call this structured outputs. We need a shared header and that is authorization and then bear our secret open AI key. There we go. I pasted it in. Now for the new API call, let's expand this. We're going to use it as an action. And in this example, I'm going to create a consistently formatted article outline where I want headings and then subheadings under those. So I'm going to call this create outline. This is going to be a post request and we're posting it to 
the regular chat completions endpoint. And how I originally did this was I opened up ChatGPT and I also opened up the docs in platform.openai.com. I scrolled down to structured outputs and then I looked at some of their examples. And for this, I used chain of thought. So I copied this example JSON body and wrote, I'm trying to create an article outline with headings and subheadings. Can you use this example JSON schema and create one for my use case? And then I pasted it in, hit enter, and it started creating the code for me. So in JSON schemas, in structured outputs, you still have a system message and a user message. And I found that the system message and user message helps the GPT model properly fill in the JSON schema. So in the system message, if I ask specifically for three headings and then five subheadings each, it's going to follow that in the structured output. So this part is very important for it to give you exactly what you want. I also found in one of the examples, which was UI generation, that they had a description for each of the properties. And in this description, you can also guide the AI almost like another system message to tell it exactly what you want for this section. And this UI generation example is actually pretty interesting. It says that it wants an enum, which is specific values. It needs to choose one of these values for this section and then a label, the label of the UI component. Here's an array of nested UI components, class name. So there'd be a bunch of input fields. The user writes what type of app page that they want, the colors of their brand or company, and it can shoot out a consistent result each time based on your JSON schema. So I'm going to copy a portion of the text that has the description parameter, and I'm going to write, can you add the description parameter to both heading and subheadings like in this example? And let's paste in that example, hit enter, and then I'll copy that code and paste it in here. So for the system message, I'm going to write, you are a helpful assistant, provide an outline for the user. And in the user message, I'm going to write, generate an outline with two main headings that have three subheadings each. And let's look through the JSON schema. So what's needed is response format. The type needs to be JSON schema. You need to name your JSON schema and keep it relevant. This helps the model guide its responses. Next, if you're going to create a nested array like this, I'm calling it sections and inside the section, there is a heading, which is a type string. And then we have the description, the main heading of the section. And then within the headings, there are subheadings and those subheadings are string and we can go subheadings under the main heading. We also need the required parameter and we need heading and subheadings. And we also need required sections because it's a nested array. And the last thing needed in the JSON schema is strict equals true. And apparently, according to their docs, when this parameter is sent through with the API call, the model knows that it needs to strictly follow your JSON schema. It can't variate from that response. It becomes a bit more deterministic. Let me hit initialize call and we get this output. So I'm going to scroll down, I'm going to click show raw data, and we'll see what's going on. It output exactly what we wanted. So here's the content sections, and in the section there is a heading, and that heading is heading 1, and we have some subheadings under that heading 1, subheading 1 1.1, subheading 1 1.2, subheading 1.3, and then we have a heading again, heading number 2, subheading 2.1, subheading 2.2, and subheading 2.3. Now I'm going to add in the user message, the article is titled how to stream gaming on Twitch. Let's send that through again. And I'm going to scroll down, show raw data and look at the headings we got. Getting started with Twitch streaming, the subheadings, creating a Twitch account, setting up your streaming software, choosing your hardware. And then the second heading, enhancing your stream quality with subheadings, optimizing video and audio settings, engaging with your audience, using overlays and alerts for professionalism. So you can see that each time you run this call, you're getting a consistent output. Because if I ran this call within ChatGPT, sometimes I'd get heading, heading one, subheading, heading two, and then other times I'd get something like 
hashtag, hashtag, heading, hashtag, hashtag, subheading. And then sometimes I'd get star, star, heading, star, star, which means bold, star, star, subheading. And then another time I might get heading 1.1 and subheading A. You never know what you're going to get. It's an inconsistent format each time. Of course, in your prompts, you can say that you want it in this format, but still sometimes it's going to shoot out something different. And with all the tinkering to my system and user prompts to get a consistent result like this, all I have to do is provide one JSON schema with a very simple system and user message, and you'll get the same results every single time. Now, let me talk about a quick limitation that I found when experimenting with structured outputs. So I wanted to get greedy. I wanted to generate an article with the exact same format in each response. And I did that with a very long JSON schema. So I did one with an introduction and then section one, section two, section three. But every time I added an extra label, an extra parameter that was required, it reduced the quality of output for each of the labels. So for example, if this schema was to create an introduction and in the description I wrote, write two paragraphs of content. In the output, it would write two paragraphs of content. Perfect. If I kept that introduction in there and then I added section one and in section one, I wrote write three paragraphs of content. The introduction in the schema would shrink to one paragraph and the first section would also shrink to one paragraph. So it would stop following the instructions and instead it would seem to save on output tokens which is really weird because in theory, you should be able to make a JSON schema that's 200 lines long and in each of those labels generate exactly what you need, but it doesn't seem to work that way. If anyone else has experience with this, please write in in the comments below because my workflow has become very cumbersome. I have to make multiple structured output calls to get the introduction, to get quotes, to get paragraphs, to get sections. And it'd be nice if I could put it all in one API call. The second limitation, and this is just a limitation with bubble is you need to parse the response. So in this previous subheading example, let's reinitialize the call. You get a JSON response of just content. It would be nice if it parsed it into sections, headings, subheadings as well. So what you need is a JSON parser. So in the plugins, I'm going to install this. And in your workflows as an action, I'm going to go to plugins. Here's the JSON parser. You're going to get the key. So let's say it's heading. And then the JSON is going to be the result of that API call. And therefore, after parsing that data, you can grab the value in heading and use it elsewhere in your app. But with these default JSON parsers, it has trouble with arrays. So you got to fool around with it. I ended up having to make custom JavaScript code to parse it within bubble. So it would be nice if it was parsed automatically. I'm slowly working on rolling out a new update to your AIagent.com, which uses structured outputs for each of the agents. Therefore we can get consistent results each and every time. No more formatting issues, no more weird text in your outputs. You can be confident that the AI is going to respond how it should be, which means you'll be more confident running it for your business. Your AI agent is a business suite of AI agents that can all help move your company forward while you focus on the more important things like getting customers, selling your product and making a profit. I'll leave a link to your AI agent in the description below. If you're a developer like me and you like building your own apps, I've designed an online course called how to build a custom AI app in it. I teach you how to build with bubble implement AI API calls and even monetize to your users. I'll leave a link to this in the description as well. And if you like this video, I put two more on the screen right now. Both have been catered to your personal YouTube watch history. Give one of them a click for me, give it a watch and I'll see you in there uh, later.